kind of flaky. Uh, well, I was saying, uh, we were talking during the break, and I was saying that you're, you're one of the few people in the world that I think everybody will um, hear the truth from. I mean, well, just, I just George Carlin's my, truth. My version of it, maybe. Your version, but we want to hear it. We want to hear it. But, you know, uh, one of the things we that... We wanted to hear it for 35 years, man. How awesome is that? That's pretty cool. It's pretty good. awesome well, one, that you've given us one that. One thing that I don't understand is uh, audiences will let me off. Like, if I'm attacking Christians, or if I'm attacking white people, I have a whole long thing attacking white people in this new show, and, and, and people will sit in the audience, and it's more or less this. It's, oh, he doesn't mean us, honey. He's talking about the other white people. <laughs> they all, actually, they're letting themselves off the hook is what it is. But they kind of, they'll accept certain things. I don't think I, they're letting I, themselves off the hook. I think they're listening. Yeah. Oh, I, I think part, that, they're just I, accepting what you say. We all think the same way. I mean, sooner or later, yeah. we have to. Mm -hmm. We're all then scared. Then you like the way she looks at the guest. I was telling her, she goes like this. She says, yeah, <laughs> what do you think? What do you wear a size? Seven and a half? <laughs> eight and a half? It's just really penetrating. I like that. You're yeah. 61 years old. That's right. And you had two heart attacks. I had three. I had a minor one, and then I had a couple of nice ones. Really nice. <laughs> really nice. Yeah. The well, kind that make you pay attention. Well, what have you, what have you learned about mortality and life? And I mean, like in a three, three minute, three I've second I've thing. learned that personally, on my, in my case, I'm very lucky because uh, I get symptoms and I know what to do about them. I'm not one of these moron men who say, oh, a little gas, honey, let's keep driving. <laughs> Uh, I go, I go, and I say, it hurts. And they say, lie down, take this, and then it's on its way. But a lot of people don't get symptoms at all. They don't even feel it. They get these silent heart attacks. What do I know about mortality? Uh, nothing, except that I have it. I will die, but not for a long time. I think I'll be 94. My Uncle Martin was doing push-ups on the linoleum floor in the kitchen of my house when he was 94, so that's my aim. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, thank you. So having them heart attacks and stuff, having them heart attacks, and I know you lost your wife too. Yeah, a couple of years ago now. And 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 all of that that didn't that didn't move you to a if it different did I, if if it did I didn't notice it. You know, I, I just kind of, I'm very very focused and and I don't notice those kind of their peripheral. I'm, I'm sure the effect is there somewhere. You know, if I were to sit down for a half an hour and think about it and talk to someone about it. But offhand, uh, I don't know. Well, Except how about this? Let me, let me live a little smart. I stopped all the cocaine. That was good. That was real good. Stopped all that. But you say you're doing your best writing now, so yeah. maybe that has something to do with it. The heart attacks? Well, maybe your like look at mortality in the face had yeah. moved you to a, maybe, a higher maybe, place. Maybe it it sure made me see myself as. Uh, you know, as, as a person that had a certain limited amount of time, and I wanted to do the best things I could with my work before uh, I didn't get to do it anymore. What the hell's wrong with us? And that's my last question to you, mister. Look at the, what they do with these kids now. They're teaching them French while they're still in the womb. And they're trying to, t to get a kid into a college be before he's figured out which side of the playpen smells the worst. These kids are all scheduled all day. Even to play, they have play dates. Play dates these right. kids are scheduled. Right. I say you need an hour every day for daydreaming. A kid should have a mandatory hour. You turn off everything electronic. You open the window. If it's nice out, if it's not, you can leave the window closed. And you look out the window, and you just think and daydream and look at the clouds and wonder about stuff. One hour every day would be the best thing these people could do for their kids. But no, they got to go to horseback, and then to Little League, and then to Cub Scouts, and then to swimming, and then to whatever they're, you know, these things. All nine things. It's, it's really, I think it's... Un I think... I I loved my unstructured time, and I turned out fine. Me too. That's the, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> Absolutely. You know what? I think maybe we do live in an age where there's an absence of wonder, and I think you're right, and I think you are, like, the best philosopher in the world. Thank, Thank you. you so much Thank for being here. Thank you very, very much. Girl. It's my pleasure to come Thank here. You. Thanks. I was thrilled when I heard you wanted me. Thank you. Thank you, George. Well, don't forget to check George out in his new HBO special this Saturday night or else. Coming up, Cheryl.